We need to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to improve their well-being. We need to empower people and build social elevators. Let's bridge those divides. Globalization now is far from just about money and economic opportunities. During this period of globalization, we have also witnessed how technology has developed, often with an exponential speed. Today, we are more aware of what does and potentially can divide us and bring us together. If we do not care about those who are in risk of losing from globalization, then no one will truly win in the long run. The OECD is, in my view, uniquely placed to facilitate the search for answers in this very complex debate on globalization. All institutions need to look hard at what are they doing to reconnect with those people who feel left behind by globalization. Because you don't need to give them a nicer brochure to explain to them uh, how they got there. What you need to do is have a policy that actually somehow materially affects their life. Civil society certainly has a, a big task to do two things. One is that we, know, we need to reach out to those who don't agree with us because there's a bit of an echo chamber effect. And the second thing is, you know, we always, of course, uh, hold governments to account for their lack of transparency and, and legitimacy. There's a big emphasis at the forum about retraining and redistribution. But if we don't create good jobs, jobs that people want, then we're not going to meet this rising discontent and anger. I don't feel that's going to go anywhere. And I think as much as we see this problem play out culturally with right-wing populism, we need to look at their raw economics. If you feel your government sounds out of touch, you're not going to trust their policy decisions. So really listen to civil society because they're, they're about the only people that are actually representing the collective will of end users, people, citizens. I think policymakers adapting their framework through the digital world have a great opportunity to experiment more. Look at cities, look at small companies, look at all of the citizens using the technology and try to learn from the experiments. Technology will not be by itself the critical factor. The critical factor will be innovation, imagination, and how to use these new technologies Digital transformation means that an idea can occur in one place, but be immensely scalable across the world. So if someone's tackling a really juicy problem in a local environment, through technology, that solution can be scaled, and the opportunity to create greater global change is there. Entrepreneurship has always held a lot of promise for the future. It's an environment that's kind of bridged a lot of gaps has provided a lot of flexibility in the workplace, so that, for example, has kind of helped bridge the gender divide, has provided opportunities for younger people to kind of take up a lot more place in society. Millennial workers, like older workers, like the increased flexibility to do project-based work, and how do you uh, motivate uh, those uh, individuals to want to stay at a particular job, I think is going to be important for the future. The future world of work is one of uncertainty. Uh, lots of jobs are going to be automated, I believe, and it's going to happen faster than we think. Governments need to make sure that we have redistribution systems, not just for people who are working, but also for those who will be unemployable. So business leaders, I believe, play an incredibly important role in bridging the divides within society. Administrations, by definition, change over time, and businesses can provide that constancy. The purpose of company remains to, of course, serve shareholders, but also put people at the center. Because in the end, you know, people are making society. We need to make it personal now, that in every situation, especially at the level where it makes a difference, and that is cities, that is business, that is civil society generally, leaving no one behind, being fair to least developed countries, small island developing states, those most affected by climate. There is now a momentum, but it's not enough. We need to really galvanize the extraordinary potential 